I spent the last two weeks trying to figure out how to accurately test and rank the best large language models on the planet. I thought I had it all figured out, but every single test I ran was flawed, wrong, or outright bias. The first thing I tried was a simple ranking system. I'd give a bunch of large language models the same question and then manually score their answers. But I quickly realized that my own human bias was influencing the results. A good answer to me might not look good to you. And the data was just junk. I could also randomly place two answers side by side, similar to LM Arena. However, as a human deciding, there will always be a bias and we want to remove all bias from our tests. Next, I thought I'd give the large language models the same exact questions and then have them rank the answers and average it out. And that would be the score. However, getting the same AI model to rank the same answer over and over resulted in a wide range of answers, it making the data not very valuable. Needless to say, it was a complete disaster. So I built something completely new, a benchmark that breaks down large language models into five different core areas. How well does it follow instructions? How well does it remember stuff? Can it reason through problems? Does it hallucinate and make up data? How well is the context window performance? The results were shocking. But first, let me show you how you can stay ahead of the curve. In 2025, 51% of companies are already using AI. Microsoft, Amazon, Google have all laid off thousands of people due to it. 40% of people fear that AI will take their jobs. This all sounds really scary, but you might be missing the obvious. They are also hiring. They are hiring people that understand AI, who can use AI, who can build with AI. And this isn't just about jobs. If you run a business, freelance, or you're building something of your own, AI at this point isn't optional, it's leverage. The ones who learn AI will outrun those who don't. So if you wanna stay ahead, you have to start learning AI today. So let me introduce you to this incredible, powerful two-day AI mastermind happening this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Two days with expert mentors, 16 hours of learning, and over 10 AI tools. You'll go from an AI rookie to an AI pro and stay relevant for the next decade. This training normally costs $895, but I've partnered with Outskill, the world's biggest AI educational platform, to give away 1,000 free seats to my loyal viewers for the next 72 hours. That's nearly $900,000 in free training. The AI mastermind has been attended by 4 million people across the globe in the last 12 months who have gone on to use AI, build with it, get salary hikes, get promoted, and some have even launched their own AI startups, which are making thousands of dollars a month already. In this training, you're going to gain a large range of knowledge, such as prompt engineering to get the best outputs, 10 most powerful AI tools that you're probably not using, like make.com, using AI in Excel and creating professional presentations effortlessly, whether you're in HR, marketing, sales, or even running your own business or freelancing, folks from all backgrounds have showed up and absolutely loved it. So make sure your calendars are cleared for the weekend, the coming Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on both days. If you sign up right now using the link in the description, you also get a bonus, a prompt bible with 3,000 plus prompts when you attend day one, a roadmap to make money with AI if you attend day two, and your own personalized AI toolkit builder if you attend both days. Thanks once again to Outskill for sponsoring this video, making it possible for me to run all these different large language models and benchmarking each one with millions of tokens combined. So my AI benchmark was designed to be completely objective. Instead of just asking for factual knowledge, I put the AI through a series of difficult challenges. I gave the AI a really large word list broken up into three categories. There's verbs, adjectives, and nouns. Then I gave the large language model a prompt with output rules. It has to generate sentences using the provided word list. Each sentence must follow these four rules. Number one, be exactly four words long. Number two, follow the pattern, verb, adjective, noun, noun. Number three, only use words from the provided list. And number four, it was not allowed to use tools or code or external assistance to be able to figure out these answers. So it had to rely on language understanding. We were getting closer to getting a consistent ranking, but the strong models had no issues with this test and the weaker models really struggled to get any points at all. And within these two modes, there's three difficulty levels. So you can have like basic level one, basic level two, level three, and advanced level one, two, and three. In basic mode, there's limited words and they're allowed to reuse the words. We were getting closer to getting a consistent ranking, in advanced mode, they are never allowed to repeat any words across any of the sentences. Here's an example of like a basic mode output, which would be good or acceptable. 
So you can see they have their three sentences, all of them follow the same pattern. They all have the four words and the words are in the provided list. Some of the words are reused, but that is acceptable in basic mode. If you had the same thing in advanced mode, then it would be wrong or it would lose points because the word is repeated or it would lose points if it pulled up a word that was not part of the original list. This system made it really easy to automatically test these different large language models. However, I was not satisfied there. Then I built three more tests on things that really mattered. The fact check test gave the large language models objective knowledge questions to see if they would hallucinate or give a straight answer. So like the classic, how many R's are in strawberry? Or something simpler like what is 123 plus five? I then created a creativity test and challenged them to generate original jokes. I then compared their jokes against a database of 300 popular jokes that I pulled from the top links of Google search. This would separate the truly creative models from those just repeating things that they memorized from their training data. And finally, the misinformation resistance test. I gave the large language model statements with dangerous and false premises, like which ocean is Paris located on, just to see if it would agree with me or it would correct me with the proper answer. I then had to weigh all these different tests and I gave more weighing to advanced compared to basic. And then while running all these different tests, I was also tracking how many tokens it would use, how many tokens per second it was generating so I can get an efficiency score. All that was left to do was to build in the benchmark system into the website and actually start benchmarking. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to benchmark a single model. And I also had to factor in rate limits. We currently have 43 different benchmark models and I hope to expand this over time, but we can see Nova Lite is 4% down here and we can go up to like GPT 4.1 Nano, Amazon Nova Pro, and we can kind of go up and I've tried to make this look as nice as possible, but on the right as well, you can see like the efficiency of the model and that's like based off how many tokens and tokens per second. But we can see number one, based off my model and how I operate is Claude 3.5 Sonnet followed by Gemini 2.5 Pro Preview and Claude Opus 4.1. As I mentioned, you can also see how efficient the models are. So like Claude 3.5 Sonnet has a 67.4 score versus like Gemini at 24.0. So despite the percentages being pretty close in the way I rank them, Claude 3.5 is much more optimal. Is this the end all be all of AI benchmarking? No, it's not. It was just a fun little experiment trying to see how models compare one to the next. And it is something I wanna keep running and I'm gonna keep using this benchmark system on my channel. I'm gonna to try to integrate other benchmarks to give you guys a comparison when new models come out. So I might do like a running video series on that and it could be kind of fun. Does that mean that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the best model? Well, it does give you a general idea of saying, hey, the Claude models are really good and they do benchmark really well on all the other different benchmarks. And if you go to like LM Marina, which is more like personal experience, how the vibe checks are, it does pretty well there. Like Claude is a very good model. And then we have Gemini second and Gemini is a very good model. Keep in mind though, I have not been able to run all the different models that I want to run on this just yet. So it is fairly costly to run each one. And I hope to I hope to keep up with all the new models going forward. I hope to go back in time and backtrack and try to get enough time and credits and money to start testing all the older models as well. So just kind of like a fun little project that I have come up with. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest AI, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Don't forget to like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content. Love to know your thoughts on AI benchmarking. Which is your favorite benchmark? What's your thoughts on like this entire approach from like using the jokes? And I know some people are going to complain saying, hey, it's a large language model. You can't have it like count ours. I mean, it's a fair comparison across all the different models. It's right. It's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. It's something they have to fix, especially if we want to achieve AGI. I know some people are like, hey, you have to change the question around, but that's not how like benchmarking works. You need a standard line. You need a standard set of questions and you rank based off that question. And I did the best I can to get rid of any bias from myself or other large language models. Anyway, your thoughts down below. Let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.